New face. Mm-hmm. I uh, have a tendency that I hate shaving, no matter what it is, whether it's an electric razor or a straight razor or any kind of razor, no matter what I put on my face or how I go about it, whether it be because of some minor skin cancer here or whether it be because of Crohn's disease that I had, and whatever the reason. The point is, is that my face just really hurts when I shave and I, I don't like it. And then you got to spend all this time looking at yourself in the mirror. And if I had to look at myself in the mirror as much as some people look at themselves in the mirror, I think I would get a new mirror. But <laughs> I don't like that. I'm not narcissistic enough, I guess, to get into getting myself all prepped, <laughs> even though I was born in Southern Cal. But every now and then I grow my beard back for a while and then I shave it off. I used to make it a tradition that on on uh, certain Jewish holidays I would shave it off because I just wanted to celebrate it in my own little way. You know, kind of like when people celebrate Christmas and they put up a tree. You know, it's, they're not worshiping the tree, they're just doing it because they're celebrating. They don't really care what it meant or where it came from or what it's doing. They do it for their family's sake. And I used to shave my my face on the day that the temple was destroyed on uh, Tishbiyah, which is usually in July, August. And it'd be about the right time for me to shave it again because it was kind of like uh, give my face a refreshing, you know, let me be whatever. And this year what I did was I shaved off my head and my face at the beginning of summer and man, my wife didn't recognize me. She kind of liked it. (laughs) So for all you bald guys, (laughs) God bless you, but... And I grow so much hair that, you know, it grows everywhere. Anyways, you know, so often I read and I see on the internet people that are burned out and bummed out by the things that have gone on in their life because they didn't necessarily live up to their own expectations. They either went through a divorce and now they feel like God can't use them or they suffered some consequence of their actions they either committed adultery or they had some pornography let's say or maybe they they did something illegal you know on their taxes <laughs> or they got a speeding ticket or that their children weren't raised quite the way they thought they should be or somehow some way you find yourself not in the way that you thought you should go you know and I like to I have a real simple answer to most of what people tell me, you know, and they don't like the answer at first unless they can see my face, you know, I can smile about it and share with them what I really mean. So that's why I want to say it now. For every time that you find yourself not measuring up to your standards of what God, you know, you thought God wanted for you, put the word so in front of your ideal and I think you'll be able to understand where God is coming from. It's not like he didn't know, okay? It's not like he didn't see it coming. You're being made aware of it, but he already knew. So, when you get into this whole idea of being bummed out, blown out, fried out, destroyed by your own failings, so what? Who cares? Get up, get on with it, get over it, and get on with God. I mean, (laughs) Jesus Jesus isn't going to die again for you. Okay? You get this now? Or you get the direction I'm going here? Jesus doesn't have to die again so that you can be forgiven again because you were already forgiven once when you got saved and now that you blew it in ministry or something that you suddenly have to be overtly humble and overtly reckoning yourself, you know, dead unto sin and that now you can't ever be used again? I'm sorry, but David, the king, was a murderer. He flat out premeditated and chose to kill someone in order to get a woman. God still talked to him. (laughs) God still dealt with him. God still moved with him. He suffered consequences for it. And a heck of a lot of the children of Israel died because of David's sin. And so he's a mass murderer in some ways because of the results of his sin. So if David's after God's own heart, recognize how David dealt with his major sins. And I'm sure you didn't commit murder, but if you did, well, there's hope for you still. (laughs) So get real. Get on with it. Get over it, you know. Maybe you don't feel like God is dealing with you directly yet, but he will. 
All you gotta do is be honest with yourself that he already died for you. He already forgave you. He's already moving in grace to bring you to restoration so that you can get on with the salvation message that God gave you from the beginning. Because here's the point. The same way you're forgiven, you're supposed to forgive others. The same way you were given grace, you're supposed to give grace to others. The same way you were loved right now, you're supposed to love others. So if you failed, you're probably more tender towards others, I hope, than most that don't fall down. And the reality of being forgiven is that you better not be getting bitter, because if God forgave you, then you ought to forgive others. The same thing is true in ministry. If God brings you into some place where you fell apart, guess what? Everybody does. Sorry, it's the human condition. The good that I would not, that which I do not, and that which I would not, I do. And God forbid who can deliver me from this body of sin that I live in. Jesus, when we finally die, but not until then, sorry. It's a pie-in-the-sky idea that you're never going to sin again. And the people that think so are that, you know, we're a congregation that you may have failed them in. Hey, they may crucify you like the crowds, but guess what? Jesus didn't send you out to build mansions in the sky. He sent you out to deal with the very fact of taking up your cross, dying, and being resurrected again. So that may happen a lot in your life. Get over it. He paid the price. He can take care of you every step of the way as you go on your day, every day, with Him. You have a personal relationship with God. What you do with that is your choice. You can move on with it, or you can just ignore it because God is calling. And He's calling to you every day to sit down, get real with Him, deal with it, and move on with it. Just have faith. He's going to speak to you. He always has, He always will, and He never will forsake you. In daily life, the Lord will not cast us off forever, but though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion. Fear thou not, saith the Lord, for I am with you. I will not make a full end of you, but correct you in measure. For a small moment have I forsaken you, but with great mercies will I gather you. In a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on you. Think about that for a minute with everlasting kindness. Now there's a term that you don't hear every day about God our Father. Everlasting kindness. Will I have mercy on you, saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that hath mercy on you. O thou afflicted, tossed with the tempest and not comforted, Behold, I will lay your stones with fair colors, and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will bear the indignation of the Lord, because I have sinned against him. Until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. God is not in your condemnation. I know who is. And God is not in your termination of what you think was the end of your relationship in some way with God. No, it's not over. It's not done until he perfects you in heaven to the completion of his work in you that he began. Because he who began a good work in you will complete it unto the day of salvation. What you thought of before was only preparation for what you have today. Everything that existed in the past only brings you to this moment right now. The reality of God living in you is that God is working through you to accomplish his purpose for you and will accomplish in all those around you that which he has determined for them likewise. So if you participate with him, you get a joy out of seeing that, wow, I get to be with Jesus doing these things and accomplishing them. And that he does really love me. Huh. Well, ain't that a kick in the head? <laughs> God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Amen to that. <laughs> and I don't use the word amen that often. When the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, and the Lord raised them up a deliverer, Ehud, a man left-handed. Left-handers go to heaven? <laughs> After him was Shamgar, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox goat, and he also delivered Israel. The Lord looked upon Gideon and said, Go in this thy might. Have not I sent you? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. 
So I'm the poorest of the poor. The Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me, lest Israel should vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God is very simple. He's a can-do. Not a will-do, not a should-do, not a has-to, but a can-do. God can do in you all that he's promised. He can. And you know what? Not only can he, but he will. So I know how hard it is when you are really beaten down and discouraged and completely blown out and bummed out and fried out and just lost. Then do it over again. Do what you did in the first place. Only this time, keep in that right relationship every day, walking with him and talking with him, whether you hear him speak to you or not. Because gradually, as you do, he will, and then through you, he will accomplish more at your latter end than he ever did from the former. Because greater will be the grace in you for what you have failed to do than the grace that you thought you had when you thought you were doing all that God wanted to accomplish through you. Today, learn that grace is not so much a philosophical idea as a practical reality in your life given to you because every day you will fall down in some way. You are not perfect yet, but you will become that which God has ordained you for today to meet with Him and then go on to others as He has made you perfect for the circumstance and situation with your fallibilities to be able to render to them the same love, the same comfort, the same grace, the same mercy, the same exceeding kindness of God to someone else who needs to hear it, even as you were shown kindness. And maybe not from other people, but from the Lord thy God in the midst of thee, he has kindness for you.